Okay, so I am going to show you all how I would typically design a leather pattern using Fusion 360. In this case, I am going to be making a bandolier that you may have already watched the video on. I have, at this point, part one uploaded. Part two should be uploaded uh, shortly. Uh, but this is simply how I would go about making something uh, for a customer in leather um, and it's similar to what I do with woodworking first thing I would do is if it's an item that I would want to create for different customers in this case a bandolier I may get more than one person that would want one I would use uh, parametric modeling because with parametric modeling as I've said before uh, you're able to adjust the sizes or in woodworking you know, the shapes, the lengths, the widths, as needed. You know, for furniture, you can make it larger, smaller. Leatherworking, you can make, in this case, the bandolier uh, longer to fit around someone's chest or smaller if it was for a kid's uh, garb, costume, or whatever uh, the case may be. So that being said, I would first do a perimeter for the length, which is the obvious obvious um, size that would probably be adjusted the most in this case so I would do length underscore um, overall size maybe and in this case I'm going to do 36 inches for this particular one and let's see I would also need a width on a bandolier I typically would do four inches so let's go in and do uh, let's do width uh, actually you know what let me do material uh, width and I'm going to do four inches for the strap uh, length it will be the same as the overall size as far as when you cut it and that's because as you may have seen in my other video um, I typically on a bandolier I would cut um, the width of about three quarters of an inch to which actually holds the bullets um, in place I would cut at the same length of the bandolier as far as with a strap cutter and if you needed more or less bullets you could always trim it at the end before you rivet it onto the overall piece so in this case it's gonna be the same length as the overall size which is already a perimeter set which popped popped up right there and went away didn't hit enter I do use a PC, not a Mac, for all of my computing. Let's see. Okay, so that would be for the strap. Now this strap, and let's rename this just to make it a little bit easier to remember. Uh, bullet. Let's say let's call it bullet strap. If I could spell it correctly. So let's say bullet strap, okay? So the bullet strap width uh, strap width, we're gonna do about three quarters of an inch, I would think would be fine. So 0.75 there. Now for the eyelets is what I'm gonna call well, let's just call them what they are. They're oblong punches. That's the tool you would use as well. Oblong holes. I'm going to put bullet just in case I need to remember what it's for. There's not going to be a lot of uh, perimeters set on this particular build. There's not much to it. So, I'm going to need to fit that three-quarter inch strap in 
this opening. And I kind of want to make it a little bit wider for movement when I put the leather through. If someone were to take this template and use it for, their, for themselves, you're going to want the strap to fit, obviously, into the hole, which can be changed. Not a big deal. Not a problem to adjust that manually. But just to be safe, we're going to call this point uh, seven nine. Give us a little bit of breathing room. Now, uh, on this particular design, I'm going to add some like four inch straps to buckle uh, the bandolier together at the bottom. So what I want to do, and before I do that actually, let me just get these holes out of the way for the rivets in case I want to add rivet holes for a customer. Uh, let's see here, let's do holes. Uh, rivet hole. We're gonna do rivet holes. And let's do those. Let's do those. 0.125. I may want to go a little bigger. I may change that. But let's do that. And let's do holes. Uh, for sewing. And let's do these. And I'll show you where these come into play later. Now for the strap. Back to the strap. So the strap, buckle strap, actually, if I could spell again, uh, buckle strap length. This is going to be four inches. And I'll show you where this comes into play. So four inches there. Uh, buckle strap. Uh, let's see, buckle strap. Length. It turns red like you just saw there because we already, it lets you know you already have this perimeter in place, which we already obviously know that. This is gonna be the width. And on the width of this, we're gonna do uh, just the three quarters there. Okay, now on the buckle strap, I think what I want to do here, buckle strap length. Hmm, how do I want to call this? Let's call it buckle again. What this is, and I'll show you also on this one a little later. This is going to be the side that holds the actual buckle. So this one actually, I'm going to make four inches and I'm going to go back to this one and make it six inches. This is going to be the actual strap. Think of a belt you put on. This is going to be the actual belt that's with the holes. Okay, jumping right into it. We're gonna work off the Z-axis plane here. And as usual, we are going to grab a rectangle. And this is going to be overall size there. This is going to be uh, Material width. There you have it, four inches. That's what I needed. Uh, let's take a look at this by hitting the home button. And I like that. Okay. Let's go back to the right side here. So, what I would typically do here is go on and I'm just, let's go on and add the oblong punches in first. And you're not gonna want bullets down here where you strap. Sometimes bandoliers, you would have it all the way. 
to the buckle. Sometimes people only want it on the front for like a costume or garb because when they lean back in a chair, probably the easiest way now that I think about it to do it, just do a rectangular uh, pattern. So this will give you the capability of making several of these as far apart as you want. And in this case, again, we want these to be, well, we don't want extent, we want spacing for one. And we're gonna want these to be three quarters of an inch apart. And we're gonna want more than three. We're probably gonna want uh, 18. Let's see how that looks. That's pretty good. What this is gonna do on this one, I can tell from experience is it's going to give us enough bullets to go up the front and it looks like a little bit over the top of the shoulder but to be safe I'm going to maybe add 20 of these A rectangular pattern again you want spacing uh, you want point three quarters of an inch then you want 20 of these and there you have it folks just that easy I didn't even have to use the mirror lines which is nice so now that we have that let's go in and do something while I'm thinking about it let's go in and take care of some of these edges here because and you can hold down control on a PC and do several of these if you want and I don't want that to be an inch so let's do a quarter of an inch Oop. just to give it a little smoothed edge let's go over here I don't really need to see the dimensions right now okay so now you can see I get a little bit of a curved edge on these which is nice the fillet there so and I, the more I think about it the more I may want those to be a little bit bigger but and that's something the customer can decide how much of a, a curve fillet whatever you want here for your design so now what we're gonna want to do is the belt strap for the buckles. Okay, after some computer issues, we are back and we are moving along. Now what I'm gonna do next is select the entire perimeter. Like so, make sure you get these, and I lost them. There may be an easier way to select these. I don't know it. I learn as I go sometimes as well, and uh, YouTube and other classes, courses you can take. Fusion 360 has several courses that I've taken as well that are very helpful. Okay, once I grab this last one, we're going to go up here to the offset, which is a really cool feature that I use a lot in leatherworking, and that's because I can get a seam line seamlessly, no pun intended, like so. Right? So what this will do is give me a seam line. Now, what I'm going to want to do with the seam line, which I probably should have done to begin with, but it's not the end of the world. The beauty of Fusion 360, you can always go back and adjust things through your history bar at the bottom, or like I'm doing here and I'm gonna make this a construction line 
which again I should have done at the beginning because I don't want this to be interfering with anything later if I can grab that last one well it's not gonna let me that's fine I don't want this to interfere with anything let's get these scissors right here and get rid of that now we can go back to here and make that a construction line as well now the reason I did that is because I need this line but I don't want it to be an issue when I go uh, to extru extrude to make the thickness of the leather okay so the reason I did this you'll see is right here what I'm going to do is go to one of these corners say right here and I'm gonna make a hole a stitch hole and if I did the perimeter right which I did ish I don't so you don't really need to put these types of holes in a leather template unless you're going to be hand sewing because with hand sewing you're using much thicker thread and you're using a stitching awl and not a sewing machine and a lot of people don't have a sewing machine and I understand that I didn't either so you would want these holes in your template that you can push through the template that you print out onto the leather so that you can get the holes in the correct locations for hand sewing which I do have a hand sewing set up with a stitching pony uh, that I do use from time to time it's just not sewing is not my favorite thing I take that back it's a lot easier and more doable once you have a sewing machine but if without a sewing machine forget about it I mean it is not fun I'm gonna go to make these uh, point 25 and what that's gonna do is allow me to add the holes throughout the entire uh, pattern which will come in handy okay so at this point I'm going to go on and extrude and finish sketch the reason I'm doing that is because I want to get these holes on the pattern and I want to do the straps on the ends on top of the extruded leather on that particular plane so let's bring this out about one two five to extrude and you want this to always be a new component as you've seen in other videos I've done in the past like so there you have it uh, I'm already coming together it looks more and more like a bandolier now you'll see this hole here that I made a minute ago and Fusion 360, for whatever reason, takes your sketch out whenever you extrude, which is kind of annoying, but I've gotten used to it. So now that we've extruded, and only since we've extruded, can I now, for some reason as well, in Fusion 360, create a pattern on path. Not sure why it does that, but it does. So we want to select the path, which is the construction line. And... We're going to go one direction and we want to select this if it's going to let me is it going to let me okay i think it's letting me there we go thank you okay now we want to do pattern on path and it went away again I think yes it did such a finicky thing sometimes we need to select the distance that we're going to want the we're going to want this on spacing not extent 
for sure. This warning should go away. The distance we're going to want for stitching is approximately 0.25. I would typically use quantity. Let's just try 300 and see what that gets us. We're not coming around the bend just yet. Well, we are actually. So you can do it manually if you want. You can click, keep clicking these in until you get enough or you can just add them in if you know. Now at the very end they may not see if you look there it looks like 300, 314 of these is not going to be as uniform as we would like. Uh, by that I mean right there. See these are going to be a little bit closer than the rest of them. So a way to work around that is to change it to extent here at the end and then kind of manually tweak it a little bit. That looks good to me. Everything else checks out here. You hit OK. Now it's going to populate uh, based on how fast your computer is. And in case you're wondering, um, I'm using a Dell XPS uh, 17 computer that's pretty loaded, 32 gigs of RAM, um, with the GeForce 2060 uh, video card in it, which helps out with my videos as well, substantially, um, from my previous Dell XPS. It's pretty much the same as the MacBook Pro, if you ask me, just the Windows version. But anyway, so uh, now you can see, let's turn off the sketch, maybe get a little bit better look at what we have going on here. Now you're seeing a bandolier take shape. So what we're going to want to do now is get, um, get the straps because obviously we're going to want to connect this. And I have some perimeters set for the straps. If you remember from the beginning of the video, and it looks like uh, we have the side with the holes, think of your belt, uh, being around 6 inches and the uh, strap side with the buckle, you're going to be looking at 4 inches uh, for that area. So knowing that, we can go back over here and we're going to do a new component. And I want to see this origin just to make sure I'm okay with that. We don't need the sketches on because what we're about to do is actually build this component on top of this. If you remember, I wanted to extrude first. We're going to build it on top of this extrusion. extrusion. So by that I mean we're going to be on the face right there when we build this particular part. We're going to pick a rectangle, we're going to find the center around there, and how far do we want this to go out? Remember this is 6 inches, so that means at 4 inches we only have 2, 3 would be okay. If I did 4, that leaves 2, yeah, let's do 4. Let's do four. So that's just trying to see. Okay, so let's do the strap hole side is this one. That's going to give us the six inches. And over here, it will be the strap width. Like so. There you have it. Now, how much do I want to overhang? I decided on four, which would leave two to rivet in, which is fine. Um, first thing, though, let's let's go in and fill it. These two areas. 
or fillet. So let's hover there, hover there, and uh, point 0.20 is fine. Right there. I'm not sure where these holes came from. I'll have to figure that out. Did I miss something? Not sure. It's not a big deal. Anyway. What I want to do is put a construction line from the center here to the center of this, which is there. Uh, right now it's not a construction line, not a problem. We'll go over here. We will select it and make it a construction line. Again, the construction lines are great because you can use them for mirroring or whatever you need to. And they don't extrude out whenever you go to extrude and it won't split this up. So now we have the center there. What I want to do is put another construction line there and I don't know why I had turned it off. I will go back and uh, select it. Okay. There we go. Okay, almost almost hit finish sketch, which we don't want to do. So now you'll see what I'm trying to do here. What I want to do is select this line and set up a constraint with collinear to here. If it's gonna let me. You know what? I don't think it lets you unless this is a line as well. If I remember correctly. Let's check that out. Okay, so let's do a collinear. This one. And this one. And I don't think it's going to let me Okay, now that we have the strap ready to go, let's go in and extrude this. So we're gonna select it after we hit E, uh, bringing out 0.125, and we're gonna make it a new component. I can select it, new component, and we're gonna name it whole strap. Side six inch. Okay. Now, if we want to, we can just select it like so. See if it's, yeah, okay. Select it like so and right click and kind of move it where we want it. If it's going to let me select it. There we go. And we're going to put it about where we want it. Which is about, let's say, right there. Now, if you want to, you could, you know, put a place here holes where your rivets are going to go uh, which if I was going to take this template and maybe sell it or give it to someone that's pretty new at leatherworking I would probably put a hole or two here for the for the rivets so that they could see what the point of this is but in this case uh, we're not going to do that Okay, now for the buckle side, we're gonna make another rectangle. We'll just make it out here in the open. Let's do a strap for the perimeter. It's the buckle one right there at the top. Let's tab over and do strap, if I can spell today, which I can't. Width down here. There you have it. Let's hit E for extrude. Click on what we want to extrude, and we're going to do this 0.125 for the thickness of the leather. Make sure you put new component. 
right there. And then I realized I forgot something and we go back before we extruded. We're gonna go here and do some fillets right here and right there. And now we're gonna hit E for extrude and pop this thing out, 0.125, like so. And looks like one of my fillets went away. 0.10, E for extrude, 0.125, And I'm not understanding why these are not matching. What do we have here? Point 20 is why. This one's point 10. Let's just go back. And do them both at once. Boom, point 20. Point 20, enter. And hit E for extrude, 0.125. Sometimes you just have to go back. So now we can uh, take this strap and something else. Again, if I was doing this for someone to print off, I would put in an oblong punch here and a rivet hole for where your buckle would go. And I mean, leave in the comments if you would rather me fully do stuff like that in the future. I don't mind doing that. I don't know. Right now I have a very small subscriber list. That's to be exact two as of March 26, 2021. So I don't know who would be interested in seeing those kind of details. But what I will do possibly is I may add a construction line right there. See how it's giving me separate extrusions? You're not gonna have that with a construction line. What this is gonna do is it would show someone that this is where you would bend it to put the buckle. And it would also allow me to find the center, like so, and make this a little cutout for the buckle. So I would probably do about an inch total, or maybe I would do a half an inch on this one. Yeah. So I would do point, oh sorry, point two five on the length, tab over and do point two five, point one two five. Or when I want it to be a little bit less. You'll see what I'm doing here in a minute. Yeah, let's do 0.5. Right there. And I would add another construction line here by making it one, like so. The reason for that is because I would then select this line. this line and this line and I would mirror it on this line and hit OK and then I'm gonna come in with the scissors this is just one way obviously of doing it and cut that out there and I would also take this line again there's faster ways to do this this is just one way to do it 
it helps uh, or it helps you kind of learn the mirroring side of Fusion 360. It instills it in your brain when you do it this much. A mirror line again on this construction line. Bam! Hit enter. And at that point, we would grab the scissors again and cut out the stuff we don't need. And I mean, you can leave the construction lines or you can take them out. Obviously, your choice. And then what we do is actually we would extrude this. And we would cut instead of new. Let me get a better look at this for you. You would just you can just grab this and pull it through, hit enter. What that does is it gives you a cut. So you would be bending this over at the middle point to where you would have your buckle coming through. So that's just one way of the beauty of the Fusion 360. And uh, what I would do then, you can either select it there or you can come over here. And I realized that I did not make a new, there we go, new component. So you would go up here, create component from body, and we're gonna call this um, buckle strap. Like that. And you can just select it and right click if you want, or however you wanna do it. And then you can just move this bad boy wherever you think your heart desires. Let's turn off that sketch. So now, this is a very quick way to see, I don't know why I moved, how I would do a um, leather template. Um, if this helps you. And of course you would want to line these up which can be done with constraints. Um, you can also, as you've seen me do in the past, you can change this to see the different components you're using. Uh, that's always kind of cool. Okay, so if you wanted to take this and print it onto paper to or PDF, it would just be a matter of going down to the drawing from design area. Pick your size paper. Okay. And uh, you can do it to scale. Uh, whichever way you would want. Uh, let's just say the right orientation for that. Obviously, it may not fit all on one page, but there's ways to get around that. I can show you on a separate uh, video that I use. Uh, but you can kind of see where we're going with it at least and it would just print out this onto different sheets to scale and you could ad adhere the, these sheets and which in leather or even in woodworking you would probably want to just or you would want to combine these together as they print out and they would be again to scale and use them for your projects as many as you need and then go back to your perimeters should you want to make a larger bandolier or smaller one but there you have it i will keep making these videos if you guys like them and maybe do some more that are more complicated or maybe some that aren't as complicated just to help out everyone thanks for watching isn't it it's going to strap into the buckle side on the other one and i think that's enough perimeters for this so let's see if it works or whatnot. They may not want to lean against bullets. So this particular customer did not want them on the back.